All right, hey guys, um, I'm Michael, back with another tutorial. What we're going to be covering today is actually an assignment that I was given for one of my classes. And what it's going to be is it's going to be a JavaScript tutorial using the HTML5 Canvas object. So it's for my advanced digital arts class, and it's going to be an interactive um, little piece that spawns randomized objects um, and the like. So I'm doing a new thing with my tutorials is I'm going to have links up here, this side, camera's backwards. I'm going to have links up here that um, will immediately direct you to a topic in the tutorial if you're only looking for one thing. And I'm doing that so that people can quickly find what they want to what they want to actually find out of this tutorial. So hopefully that helps. Um, if not, sorry, <laughs> enjoy the whole tutorial. So what I'm going to be talking about today in this section is I'm going to break this assignment up into a few sections and I'm going to complete all of them tonight, hopefully upload everything tonight, is preparation for a programming project. Um, this is a fairly small scale project, so there's not too much that I've put into it as far as preparation. But we also have our second topic is going to be our setup for our document, creating a new document, what type, um, all that fun jazz. I'm going to show you my professor's own um, specialized format that he likes to use. If you want to use that, go ahead and use it. I'm required to use it. That's why I'm using it. I, I have mixed opinions about it. So you're going to see me pull some of the stuff out of there that he has in there. It'll be great. And then finally, we're going to talk about mouse coordinates, how you can track a mouse using HTML5 in the uh, the canvas object or outside if you delete some of the code that's in here. But we're specifying it to go into just the canvas object because we don't want to be interfering with anything else that might be happening on the page in a real life situation. So let's go ahead and jump into our first topic, which is preparation. So I typed up my preparation, my kind of layout, on a on my show notes just because it's it's a fairly it's a fairly quick document that I wrote here it's not extremely detailed it's kind of like I said a small project so what I have here is a um, little header doesn't really matter some people what I list here is I have the event handlers the arrays and the functions some people would say you need to have every variable mapped out in your plan but for me, that's that's kind of a little unnecessary because like your college major, you're probably going to change it sometime during the project. Now, in a professional project, something that's not just for a class, yeah, go ahead and, and plan everything out piece by piece. But usually you're not going to come into a situation where you need to plan every single piece out for an interactive media project. Uh, so... I'm going to run you through what I have here. I have my event handlers, which are mouse move. So anytime a mouse moves, this function is going to happen. This is where everything happens. Just wrote myself a little note. That's where all the magic is. I'm going to have mouse click, which is going to clear the array and clear the rectangle. The arrays, I'm going to have a cube array that spawns little objects, little cubes, where my, my mouse is. I'm going to have a text array because part of the assignment is that I have to have text. And I'm going to have my functions. My functions that I've decided to use are mouse position, which is what's going to track my mouse. I've got draw cubes, which will also update the array with the new information on those cubes. I have draw text, which is going to update uh, the array and draw our text, obviously. And I've got my apply physics, which is going to add some rotation to the, the cubes and it's going to make them drop from the top to the bottom of the screen. It's going to be called from inside this draw cubes function. And it's nice to sometimes map out how you're doing that. So later on, I usually include in my documentation inside my application where things are being called from, just in case someone else is looking at it and someone else wants to figure it out. That's important to always document your stuff, but that's not what I'm getting into. I'm just saying I like to, to say in functions where it's called from, if it's called from the root or if it's called from another function. It's just nice to be able to, to find that kind of stuff. So I'm going to move this back over here and scroll up to my, 
my notes. But that's all I have to say really about preparation. Now for setup, what I did is I'm using Dreamweaver. And the reason for is because that's what we're using in the class. So I'm going to be showing you in Dreamweaver, but all this stuff applies. It's all JavaScript. It's all HTML5. The stuff applies to whatever you're working with. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to work in, in Dreamweaver regardless of what you might be following along on or if you're following along on anything. And uh, yeah, it's I one thing that I do like about this is live code. You just put this up here, hit F5, and you can see your, your content that you're creating on the other side. So right now I opened a, uh, a new document. I just named it Tutorial Shape Text Random because that's, that's really all we have to do. We have to have shapes, we have to have text, and it has to have some kind of randomization aspect. Again, I'm ahead of the whole class. I've taken classes in JavaScript. I've used JavaScript for Unity extensively. So I'm a bit ahead of the curve for them. I have to go up and beyond because he's one of those professors that as soon as he knows that you know it, he requires you to, to be ahead of everyone else. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to go into his, his class because he requires us to use this. If you want to use his template, by all means, go ahead. He doesn't have a copyright or anything. Uh, here's the website. I'll also link down to it. Down here, we have the canvas code to copy. That's all it is. I'm just going to copy that, self-explanatory, paste that in here. Good stuff. So this is going to be different from when you go ahead and just open it up on your own. This is a custom system that he designed himself. You'll see when I hit F5 here, I get a canvas with a dotted outline. And that's about it. There's not too much going on here, so I'm not going to go into explanation about what his his canvas is. However, one thing I am going to go ahead and change is I'm going to see this my canvas here, this CSS. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to delete that and save. The reason being is that outline will be included in the uh, mouse coordinates later on. So I'm going to go ahead and in here, after I declare this stuff, I mean, it's not bad to have that in here. I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to start off. I'm talking about setup right now. I like to have, I like to go ahead and fill the bottom here. So I'm going to just go ahead and say context dot fill rect and I'm going to say zero zero canvas dot width canvas dot height just so that no matter what I move it to it'll take care of that for me. Then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to say context dot fill style equals I'll just do gray and context dot fill. This stuff needs, you can see I've already made amateur mistake. You don't need this fill here. I was acting like I was defining a shape first. So I'm going to go ahead and pull that up there. Then I'm going to refresh so we get our gray background. So the reason I do that is just so I can see what's going on behind me. I leave it out of any function so it's not being redrawn every time. I I leave it there just so I can see where the bounds of my canvas are. Now later on maybe I'll make this background here black, this background color, and then the canvas will be white so it'll stand out. There are a bunch of different ways that you can go ahead and do this, but I, I like to do that. Just draw it at the start of everything. Say, annotate it however you want to. Background for canvas. So that's pretty much how I like to do my setup. 
it's his little script that he has up here. Here goes the title of your project. Um, random text and shapes assignment. I usually don't do that. I did that because it's here. It's good to document your, your stuff. I just have a bad habit of not. So I'm gonna go ahead, refresh the page, delete this back here, and save. So the next thing I'm gonna go ahead and hop into for this quick tutorial, hopefully I'm not going too long, my intention are to keep the tutorials a little shorter, is mouse coordinates. Now, again, he has his own little setup for how he does mouse coordinates, and I really like it. It's something that is definitely a good thing. I'm going to go ahead, and here he's got, he'll show you under here his mouse coordinates. I'm just going to copy all this and move it around in here. So I'm pasting it outside the, the script, so it's not actually, or it's ruining everything right now. It probably won't compile. Or it just shows up in a paragraph, so. Great, it doesn't really matter. What we're going to go ahead and do is I'm going to change this to mouse variables. And get rid of this. Cut that. And paste here. I think I, I, I don't need this. I was thinking why not use it, but it's something I, I'm not used to working with in, in Unity and everything. I know where the script tags are. I can put a couple spaces here. There's no need for that. I'm going to take this function mouse position. I'm going to cut that. And I'm going to put that after this background for canvas. I'm actually going to draw this above the mouse variables. Just because it's something that I'm going to get rid of later, it doesn't really matter that I'm, it doesn't require any variables, so it doesn't really matter that I'm calling it. Besides, it calls these functions canvas width, canvas height. Which later on, if you're having performance issues, you can go ahead and write a variable up at the top to say um, var cw equals canvas dot width and then just instead of canvas dot width use cw here that's something that just reduces the number of times it calculates um, the width and height of your canvas not it's not the most intensive operation so I don't really worry about it and here I'm just gonna go ahead and take on mouse move I could type this myself perfectly fine but if it's here why not use it? So what this is, is our first move, our first event listener. And what this is doing is, I'll, I'll actually, you know what, I'll type it out for you since this is a tutorial. I'm gonna say on mouse move in my, my uh, canvas object declaration equals and then the name of of what's being called. Oh jeez, leave me alone. I want to get it to, to give me the, the little pop-up. I don't know why it's not giving it to me, the little awareness, but we're going to go ahead and we're going to call mouse position. So every time we move this, and then we're going to give it the event that this is on mouse move, all the the properties of that. And this is doing is saying every time I move the mouse inside the canvas object, call this function. So every time I move my mouse, call mouse position. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to delete all this crap that I have under here, and now we have this working. But we can't tell that it's working, can we? So what I like to do is below script, still inside the body, I'm going to open up a paragraph. And the ID 
is going to be debugger. And then I'm going to close out the paragraph. And in here, I'm going to say document. Man, I'm typing too fast. Get element by ID. And see how we name this paragraph debugger here? That's how we're going to access that. And as soon as I open up a, a quotation mark, it gives me the value. I just hit enter to accept. And I'm going to say inner HTML equals, and then I'm going to give it the variables. So here we have mouse x plus, I'm going to concatenate here, mouse y. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to actually put in something to clean this up a little bit so I can see what I'm doing. I'm going to put a just a little string in here, a space followed by two lines, and then another space. I'm going to hit F5, and there you can see as we move along, we can see that we have our X coordinate on the left and our Y coordinate on the right. So now we're really rocking and rolling. With this information you can do almost anything you want to. The, the limitations are, are non-existent. You can see since we have uh, we only go to the this object it's not going to give us coordinates out here and it's not going to go above zero. You can see that we have um, a few pixels over here. I don't know if he has a border on here. He does not. But if we had a margin here, we would not be including that in our, our coordinates. So it wouldn't be if there's a 20 pixel border here, they're not border margin, sorry. There's a 20 pixel margin here. It's not going to get included in what we're doing with our, our canvas object. This is because it subtracts by stage left by the, um, which stage is our, our canvas. Where do we declare that? Get bound in client. Since I don't like how he, he wrote this. There we go. Sorry, I am a little a little anal about some of this stuff. We what I was saying is because we're going from stage left and stage top is our defining um, start positions for this, we're not going to go outside this object here. So that's all I have for you for part one. Stay tuned for part two, hopefully uploading same time this comes up, and you'll be able to, to learn the next three steps in creating our randomization cubes and text thing. All right, I'll see you guys next time.